All right, so when we left off, I was playing with using the different halftone color separations. So here we have the, the cyan and we have the yellow. And if I move the yellow below the cyan, it'll be a little gentler <laughs> because they're overlapping each other in different ways. So the order of those, those inks matter. And I want to kind of play up the wateriness of it, so I like that. And I could always play with the hue saturation of the yellow. And make that a little less, um, less yellowy, for lack of a better word. I like what it's doing in the pinks here. Now we have these blues and these little soft yellow dots and the blues are slight, slightly outlined with white. So we're building some nice complexity into it. Okay, I could use the black as well. So these are the black halftone dots to help punch it up. I have them set at 100% and on multiply now. And I can line it up so it's not so offset. And I can do that with all of them so they line up a little bit better. Unless I want it to intentionally look messy. I don't usually want it to do. Sometimes I do. Right there. All right. So you can see those Gaussian roses pretty clearly now. And you can see the kind of retro effect of all those halftone dots. So let's see what that looks like on different backgrounds. On black, looks pretty strong, gets your attention. On gray, yep. On white, yep. So if there's anything I'm not liking, it's just the general kind of greenness to it. <laughs> and so this is my last advice. Turn off the background, hold down option, say layer merge visible, so it's all on one. And then simply go to image and auto tone. See if that shifts it at all. It really didn't for me. It shifted a little bit in the tongue. And now I can go to image adjustment and color balance. And I can just shift away from the green in the midtones. Yeah, and I'm liking that already a little bit better. Maybe shift a little bit more towards the cyan in the midtones, a little bit more towards the blue. Might be a little much. And in the highlights, for sure, I want to shift away from the green. So it looks more watery. And this is just fine tuning it before we put it up to Redbubble and before we use it on a poster. But when we put it on a poster, the background's going to affect it a lot. This is something we want to just read really well on versatile backgrounds. So did those little adjustments make a difference? Yeah, they took a lot of that green out. And I like that. Now the problem with halftones, the reason I don't do it till late, is that they will leave more effects on your screen. So often at different distances of zooming, they'll look stronger than they really are. But I'm liking how this works out. And you can always move them down below. So for instance, if I wanted to put my color holds, make a duplicate of those and move that over the top of everything, I can. And have solid tones again. 
I can even set it to multiply and just darken it a little bit. All right, just the color holds. But honestly, I don't think it makes that much of a difference to have a little bit of texture in there. I kind of like that texture in there. Maybe I'll split the difference. Okay, now let's see how it looks on gray. Good. Now let's see how it looks on white. See, I like this because I get a little bit of that offsetting no matter what the background is. Now, if anything's off, it's the yellow. and Maybe that's just too off. <coughs> but I like it. It makes it strange. Okay. So what, what options do I have? I can continue to mess with the flattened version by doing things like a dodge and burn. For instance, if I wanted the yellows to be brighter, I could dodge them. Right. Dodge them at the bottom here. I, I deadened it a little bit there. I think that works. Getting them a little bit at the top. All right, and I think I'm finished. So now I'm ready to save it. This is my spot illustration color separation test. And I have to decide if I used all of these resources that I got with the action, if I used them to actually improve it or not. The great advantage of coloring digitally is that you, you can compare and have all these different options. So let me open my recent one, which is just my color separation, or not my color separation, before I did all this. Now let's see which one I like better. Because that's the one I want to put up to Redbubble to make products and to represent my portfolio, my taste. All right, so this was it before. Put them both on a gray background so we can compare. And this is it now. So that one looks a little bit more psychedelic, more digital. This one looks more kind of hand done. It looks bluer, it looks wetter, it looks a little grosser, and all the choices seem more intentional. So I like this. All right, so I'm going to turn off the gray, save as. My finished spot illustration. I'm going to put my full name. I'm going to put in the name Red Bubble and then Water Vomiting. And I'm going to save it not as a PSD, but as a PNG, just like you would to put it up to Photo Bucket. And I think I, I will put this up to Photo Bucket. This is optional. But this will be number four. Let's see. Let's get back to photo buckets. So while that's saving. And then if you go to our page and you go to links, you'll find a link to Redbubble. And that's what this is. And I'm already logged in, but you are welcome to create your own account. And I'm going, once you've created an account, you can add new work. That's what I'm going to do. And it's a lot like uploading something to Photo Bucket. So let me show you my progression here, which is I'm hoping what your progression will be for assignment seven. They're looking strong. But we go from a sketch to a vector outline to our colored example. And then we might play with color separations. And then we might upload to Redbubble and play with different product solutions. So 
So while it's uploading, it's going to uh, default in and put in these different products. Because I saved it at a large resolution, it's able to create a lot of different products with it. But I get to choose which ones I want and I can label them and set them all differently. I can even put background colors behind, it makes a nice cloth. But let's just do the basic standard print on clothing. Let's edit that and let's set a, a color behind. I kind of like it with the dark. And then I can set how big I want it to be within that printable area. I want it to be pretty big, but centered. And then generally push it near the top. I think that looks pretty good. I'll apply those changes. And then that's going to work with all of these different types of options they have. Right, you can set colors. Yeah, I kind of like the navy blue. All right. And this takes some time, and this is not something we're going to do a lot of today. I like the heather, too. But it shows you, once you have a spot illustration, this really shows you how versatile they can be, which is the fun of it. So I'll just make a few products here. And then for the ones I don't want, I just click disabled. I can always enable them later. But stickers, I always want enabled. You don't have to do anything for that. The stickers are great just as they are. Look at that. It creates a nice white border around it, which I already have built into it somewhat. And then iPhone cases, those are a pretty big deal nowadays. So let's say I wanted it nice and clean like that on an iPhone case, and I wanted to pick a background color. Well, I can pick any color I want that I think looks good with it. It's just going to be a flat color. So maybe slightly bluish gray like that. And then I can just copy, copy and paste that background color onto other products. Or I can even tile it and make it a repetitive pattern if I wanted to. Or I can zoom in and just make it huge. Just make that tongue front and center, which is kind of fun. And apply those changes. Same thing with pillows, you know, all this different stuff. So I'm going to just disable for now. Because it's really the sticker I was interested in. You can get a duvet color, cover with it. It's nice to have a poster. That's kind of fun. I'll leave that. I don't think anyone's ever purchased my stuff on a mini skirt. Probably, especially not vomiting water, but who knows? So this is how easy it is to take your spot illustration and use it in versatile ways. And as long as you're yeah, as long as your um, image is a good enough resolution and size, you really have a ton of options. So then you just put in a name. A series of characters for angry elementals. If I really wanted to sell this well, I would give some thought to what 50 tags would help people find this. 